Warning. The following podcast contains two morons talking about sophisticated subject matter, like ninus and hoo-hahs. Also, a few whoopsie-daisies and at least one house or ante. If you don't have a strong stomach, you know where the door is. Right. On with the shenanigans, then. The podcast which you are about to hear is an account of the tragedy which befell two washed-up losers. In particular, Court Psyops and his immature co-host, Matt. It was all the more tragic in that they were uncultured morons. But had they lived very, very full lives, they could not have expected nor would they have wished to see as much of the mad and macabre as they were to see each week. For them, an idiotic podcast show became a nightmare. The events of each week were to lead to the discovery of one of the most bizarre crimes in the annals of American history, Cinema Psyops, with Court and Matt. What is Psyops? Psyops, for psychological operations, is very simply the art of influencing how people feel and think and ultimately how they behave and what they do. You don't have to defeat the enemy on the battlefield. It's better if you can convince the enemy to do what you want him to do without having to fight him. And that's really the intent behind Psyops, to convince people to do what you want them to do. So how does Psyops fit into what's happening now? The two points I'd like to make with you and the audience is that, first and foremost, PSYOP saves lives. The second thing I'd like to say, a lot of people have misconception about PSYOP. They think it's something devious and brainwashing. you don't know exactly what's going on right now but we do know that there are some psyops going on right ma'am i don't know cinema psyops and i believe with all of my heart that it is a contributing factor to our juvenile delinquency of today why i believe that is because i know how it feels i know what it does to you cinema psyops they think it's something devious and brainwashing Welcome to the last fucking episode we're gonna do on Texas Chainsaw Massacre here at Cinema PsyOps. I'm your host, Cork, the guy that's so fucking excited that this is the 307th consecutive week of this goddamn show, but even more excited that it's the last Texas Chainsaw Massacre we have to cover on this show is my co-host, Matt. Is it over? Can the bad man hurt me anymore? When will then be now? <laughs> Soon. <laughs> I just, it feels like this podcast has only ever been about uh, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre movies. <laughs> right? <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't feel like it's been about anything else. <laughs> <laughs> we've been doing this podcast since 1974, and we've been no. doing consecutive weeks on the Texas Chainsaw Massacre movies, starting well, over from the beginning again. This is an endless loop of podcast hell. Well, well, that means that their timeline matches up pretty much with our timeline with our ages and everything, because none of it makes fucking sense. <laughs> yeah, so this is a prequel yeah. to the sneaky gaslighting sequel that yeah. goes back and fixes all the problems that are happening between the first original movie, Texas Angel Massacre, which this is supposed to be a prequel to, and... All of the questions that were left unanswered by the gaslighting that they were attempting in Texas I mean, Chainsaw all 3D. All it was was more gaslighting. Everyone else is bad. And this family's just misunderstood. <laughs> I'm not so sure that they tried it that way with this one, but they're sort of like the anti-heroes in this one. But it's yeah. really fucking interesting to me that no one has learned from their past mistakes. No one looked at the Texas Chainsaw Massacre remake and then its prequel and went... You know, prequels are kind of a bad idea to try and flush out story points that no one understood from our first remake or our first movie that we tried to do in this franchise. 
No one understood that that was a problem and that what you're going to end up doing is making some Marty McFly fucked his mother holes in your story. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. That's all that happened here. <laughs> Marty McFly fucked his mom. <laughs> like and it caused a whole lot of bad kids. Like a lot, a lot. And then when he went back in time to try and stop himself from fucking his mom, like yeah. that person joined in. So he started fucking himself and his mom. And like the timeline yeah, just, just keeps, like, <laughs> it just keeps like, looping. And it's just like a never ending Marty fucking his mom and his mom coming back in time to stop. And everybody's fucking everybody, but everybody is still Marty and his mom. And it's disgusting and incest and weird. Oh, oh, Marty, what are you doing? I sent you back five times to stop yourself doing it. <laughs> Doc, uh, it turns out I'm kind of hot. <laughs> It turns out, oh, geez, Doc, it just turns out I'm kind of into it. <laughs> Fucking Jesus Christ, Marty. Yeah, well, I stole some of this from an actual, um, I think it was a college humor bit where he does actually fuck his mom and then he has to go back and fix that and he keeps going oh, back in time and fixing it. Well, there's also one, uh, there's a Family Guy episode. <laughs> Where, where, where it's like a cutaway, like you'd be like when Marty McFly went to prom with his mom, and he actually decides to go ahead and hook up with his mom anyway, and then the picture of the kids turns into like an inbred kid. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's very offensive, but fuck. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, that's kind of what this movie's gonna be like. Yeah, um, yeah, this is pretty much what this whole franchise did to us. It kept going back in time and fucking itself. Yeah, really, really, it does. Um, you know, I. I know that a lot of people that like say, oh, remakes don't ruin it. You're, you know, that movie's still on your shelf. It still exists. Yeah. And it's the same thing that like, you know, when S Stephen King said something about how movies don't, you know, his book's right there on the shelf. Nobody messed it up. It's still yeah. there. But it does, however, leave some of us with a bit of tarnish that we didn't need on the beloved franchise that we enjoy the first two, right? sometimes three of yeah. the films. Like I would be hard pressed to really kind of enjoy, I think, the original Texas Chain on Massacre again after all of this and I'm not putting the blame on 2017's Leatherface but it's I mean, it's not completely yeah. innocent either of it no it is not <laughs> you know this was a this was a rough franchise and I'm so glad that it's fucking over like let's just get into it and just rip this film to shreds let's fucking do it <laughs> and by rip it to shreds I mean properly review it with the patience that we have given all the previous films we should have done that <laughs> we set a bad president we should have done that this will keep it quiet oh hi there i didn't see you you call me cutting a new show i'm bo ransdell and i'm one of the many creators you can find on legion podcasts i said quiet my fellow podcasters and i work hard to bring you the best in horror podcasting but that comes at a cost what's that like to live deliciously not that but also yes no what i'm getting at is that there are server costs, costs for good microphones and software for editing, all the things that make our shows, you know, fun to listen to. And you can help. If you're enjoying the shows on legionpodcasts.com or in the Legion Network available on iTunes and Stitcher, just about anywhere you can download a podcast, really, you can help us out and get a little something for your trouble at patreon.com forward slash legionpodcasts. For just two bucks a month, you get a pair of movie commentaries exclusive to Patreon, and for five dollars, you can also join us for a monthly screening of a movie. All of that available on patreon.com forward slash Legion Podcasts. We appreciate it, and thank you for listening. Now, back to the cutting room. Changes. And now I see, baby, you are hurting me.
if only. It, it can't hurt us anymore. We're almost done, Court. <laughs> uh, once again, learning nothing from the past, they use a very effective, very emotional song in the trailer, which is the song that I just played for everyone on the Pirate Radio edit. Yeah. just a worthless trailer right there to play in an audio format absolutely but you know yeah. that's all yeah. i have to work with matt that's true it's that's all you got i also want to yeah. point out that that's the red band trailer which means there's even more blood and crew and grossness nice <laughs> which makes it that much more of a fucking insult that i played the audio only on that of course yeah well done court <laughs> all right leatherface 2017 let's just fucking get on with this will we um <laughs> all right all right ease up and let's all right, let's give it first let's give it the mature review that this film doesn't necessarily deserve but because of precedent shall also have like all the other ones all right, all right, all right. first 20 minutes it's 1955 and we say it's a birthday party for jed sawyer uh they're cutting a the cake that looks like it's made uh like frosting on top of meat and uh, that's exactly uh, what it was yeah and as they're getting really excited, Mama Sawyer says, well, the thief gets to try some first. And they have a guy tied up. And they're like, you know, apparently they think he was trying to steal their pigs. And he's like, I wouldn't try to steal your dirty pigs. And your family's all fucking dirt and all that. And he's talking shit. Well, it's Jed's birthday. And he gets a chainsaw. And they help him. And he gets up there. And he drops a chainsaw on the guy's leg. Cuts him. And he screams. And then Jed kind of gets freaked out because he's a small child. Who wouldn't be used to, you know, fucking trying to chainsaw somebody. And so Grandpa just gets up. You know, his mom comforts him, says it's okay. Grandpa gets up and gives him one good whack and it kills the guy. Uh, later on, uh, we see uh, a young couple. They're driving a car. And uh, they almost hit what looked like a pig in the middle of the road. But actually, it's Jed who runs away, leading one of the young, the young lady. Her name's Betty to chase after him to see if he's hurt. He actually does say, please help me, and that tricks her into following. That's true. Yeah. Um, they She finds herself in an old, dilapidated barn, and in the barn she sees Jed, but she falls through like this flooring, and f- she is severely injured. Well, all the other rest of the males of the family show up, and they go ahead, they drop an engine that's suspended above her right on her, killing her. Well, they take some time to move it over to yeah. shoot, like make sure like it's real slow. And it really pads out the she's film. She's coughing up blood, and yeah, they're, she's just in pain. They're really trying to drive the point home that she's going to basically die anyway. They're just being impatient. Yeah. <laughs> and a bit over the top. Yeah. So, um, well, we see the sheriff shows up. He gets the call, and apparently this is his daughter, which makes the sheriff none too pleased. Uh, he's pretty much threatening to kill uh, fucking... Um, Grayton. Great, yeah. Uh, great, uh, uh, he's threatening to kill him when mom rolls up. She freaks the fuck out on the sheriff. Uh, and the sheriff also says, why is it every time he rolls up on a crime scene, there's already a Sawyer who just happens to be there first? Uh, then he decides that he's going to have all her children taken away uh, for their safety. And uh, he'll have a warrant. And then he whispers to her, you take one of mine, I take all of yours. We then see it flashes. It's ten years later. And that actually begins our first clip. 19 
1935, the state of Texas instituted an endangered child care program. In the first year, nearly 50 children were taken from homes where criminal activity was the norm. Most of these children were given new names and ended into foster care. Others, the product of degenerate parentage, were remitted here to Gorman House. We take care of their psychological, physical needs. Yes, sir. I've been wanting to come on here for a long time. I think I can help them. Elizabeth. Oh, please, sir. Lizzie's, Lizzie's fine. Elizabeth. Most of these kids will end up in prison or mental institutions. Keeping them here is safer for everyone. Keep your guard up. Well, as she's talking, she talks to a couple of inmates. Uh, the, there's a big unit there. He doesn't talk much. But another one who talks to her, um, his name's Jackson. Well, then uh, another inmate gets a little rapey, and big unit actually protects the nurse. Um, and so, uh, and, you know, then finally other orderlies get involved. Well, then later on, the nurse finds another girl in the bathrooms or in the shower areas. She's stuffing a live mouse in another girl's mouth. Uh, the other girl runs away and the nurse gives her a warning, says she's going to get demerits or whatever the fuck ever. And the other girl just kind of laughs because she says she's the head doctor's favorite. Um, we see later on, uh, the head doc, he's uh, being an asshole. And the nurse is like, the big unit was just trying to help me. Me, but he's like, nah, he's he's a pretty bad kid, so we're just gonna we're gonna fuck him up, pretty much. Uh, later on, the nurse and Jackson they have like a nice little heart to heart, and he tells her to check out the ECT room, and he hopes that she can help. Um, later on, the dark uh, the, the 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 doc meets with Miss Sawyer, and that's our final clip. I'm sorry to keep you waiting, Barry Farnsworth. We've been here an hour. Where are we? Miss Sawyer. It's Mrs. Carson now. I want to see Jed. We've been through this before, year after year. He's my son, and I can afford me a lawyer now. Oh, this changes nothing. He was taken from you for a reason. Joe. It's an injunction. Court says Mrs. Carson has the right to visit. You have to let me see him. You bring me Jed. Well, that's a problem. Most of these kids are given a new name so they can hide from their degenerate uh, criminal families. Jed probably wouldn't be able to recall you or, or even his real name. But you know who he is. You and that sideways ranger. You know them all. I have a lot of patience. We'll have to check the records to be certain. That's bullshit. And that requires an entirely different court order. Well, the records are very sensitive. Get me the correct court order. I'll be happy to help you. Oh, that one took three months to get. And I advise you to get on it quick. Oh. It is 18 soon. I recommend he be transferred to prison. You're a bastard. Even though you're married into money and hide yourself a snot no shasta, you are still hillbilly trash. Bold choice, making two clips only and putting them both at the very beginning. Well, it's the only time there's ever enough dialogue for an actual fucking clip. All right. Because after this, it's all really sporadic dialogue and a lot of visual. All right. Yeah. Well, and it's not that long of a movie. So. Mercifully so. Yes. Mercifully so. And that ends the first 20 minutes. So. Cool. Um, I liked the intro thing where it's them saying, yes, this family has been maniacs the entire time. I like that Leatherface wasn't born bad leather face yeah. yeah like that he was you know turned into this and that he was raised in a family that was already mad and mm -hmm. that made him this way i don't like it's heavily implied in the original that they got into the cannibalism and the murdering of people as um for food as a, as a sort of result of the fact that the slaughterhouse was closed down and they kind of stick to that with this but they still pretty much just murder people for the hell of it and they just like to kill people yeah, because they don't feed off of that meat. They give that meat 
to their actual animals. That's <laughs> that's where I'm differing. They, it, because in Leatherface 2017, the only thing they stuck to the original story is the fact that they showed the original ending at the beginning and said, oh, it's part of the same story. However, the part about cannibalism was never talked about again. Yeah, except for you see Leatherface actually doing the cannibalism and that film was trying to, the uh, well, not not this one, not the Leatherface 2017, mm. but like the one before this, the Texas Chainsaw 2013 yeah. that you're talking about, Texas Chainsaw 3D. Yeah. What they were trying to do was basically gaslight you into believing that um, only, only Leatherface was apparently the cannibal. And while everybody else in the family may have been involved with some of the killings, only Leatherface was really the cannibal you don't really you know they kind of hide that or, or they, yeah. they they try to make you ignore that and now in this one they're like oh and by the way when drayton was younger he was a fucking maniac who loved to kill people even though in the movie that we're supposed to be a prequel to he later says that he has no taste for the killing himself he just yeah he just does the cooking you know he's fine with that he just he can't the, do the killing himself he never could not any animal. these remakes have completely rewritten a story that they're trying to attach itself to right so you are not wrong this is another attempt at gaslighting you or at least hoping that you won't pay yeah. attention to that sort of thing. But if I am to believe that this is a young version of Drayton that I am seeing who died shortly after the first movie's ending where the town comes in and shoots everybody and kills them all. If I'm to believe that, that that's supposed to be the same guy, then he should really be some kind of a cook. Somewhere. He really should be. Like but something. he's not. Yeah. It's just, you know, uh, it's just a family. Yeah. And I don't mind the idea that killing is just something this family has always done and I don't have an issue with the idea that if they thought someone was stealing their pigs they would kill them and then feed them to the yeah. pigs I don't mind that at all the thing I don't understand is why the whole family has to be a bunch of raving lunatics right off the bat like I don't know you you could make them mentally disturbed you could make them on edge you could make them randomly doing some of the stuff that they're doing but they're trying to set up that Leatherface is how old in this birthday he's like what maybe six maybe six yeah maybe seven at most and then they show him in the pig's head where he's pitching in and okay so he's six seven maybe eight um that would mean that you know it's 10 years later so he's supposed to be 18 and yeah. it's still 1959 so by 1974 that would make him like you know jesus well, here, another 10 now years in or the so? hospital it's actually 1965 1965 so it's nine yeah. years off and he's what 18 yeah. or 19 here yeah because it's 10 years later after all the kids got taken is when we go into the hospital right so he would so be there in was his 55 then it would be 65 now so yeah he's probably 17 18 years old okay so if he's say 17 or 18 years old here and then nine years later that would put him in his late 20s early 30s right yep. uh in yeah. 1974 whenever he gets you know chainsawed in the leg and escapes the fire so that would make him how old like 39 to 40 years later uh, 70 right 70 yeah like in his 70s yeah and we're supposed to believe that that is a 70 year old leather face no <laughs> and, and that's why everything's wrong about this everything right so like they're answering questions but at the same time they're ignoring things like logical chronological order yeah <laughs> i mean they were doing that how can that girl be the baby in 1971 and still only be 21, 22 when the movie came out. Right. And I get that everybody wants to come to the Texas Chainsaw Massacre to see some chainsaw action. And there was barely yeah. any chainsaw action in this film. So the stuff at the beginning was more or less like showing you like the family is what made this man, you know, like, yeah. and then they're like, he's, he's an innocent child. You know, they're trying to corrupt him all the way through here. And really what it's trying to do is they're trying to make you sympathize and be like, well, Leatherface wasn't always like this. Something clearly yeah. had to happen to him. You know, and now you have to sympathize with the character. And then they want to yeah. go another level with it where they're like, hey, you clearly think you know who Leatherface is. And by the, the way, they're kind of, yeah, they're trying to keep it a secret who, which one's Leatherface, because you're given a red herring in this. Yeah, they try to pull off a red herring on you. And yeah, by but, but it doesn't work because we all know who actual Leatherface is within the first two minutes of being in that asylum. <laughs> right. But you they know where it's going to go. Yeah, and they try to give you this red herring that is such an obvious red herring that I think this time Fred from a pup named Scooby Doo would even realize yeah. that it was not this red herring uh, when they when they try to pass it off. And I don't want to go too deep into it because when the surprise actually happens, we can really go far at it then. But yeah. yeah, there's a lot of stuff about the film that I did enjoy. I loved uh, Lily. 
Oh, what is her last name? Uh, the actress who plays Verna. Okay, yeah. I really loved her performance as Verna. She always gives it her all in everything that she's in. She does, and that was actually very good. Yeah. Um, I like the sheriff, actually. Well, yeah, Stephen Dorff really gives his all, too. Like, I, yeah. I don't think that... I, I think neither Stephen Dorff nor Lily Taylor is her name. Lily Taylor. Mm-hmm. I don't think either of those two got the memo that this movie is um, not taking itself seriously. Yeah, they, they both took it seriously. Yeah. <laughs> they're really acting their heart out. They're giving it all their all. And the scenes that they are in are quite good, especially when they interact with each other a little bit here and there. Um, and then yeah. the, uh, what's his name? Um, the fucking Iron Fist guy that's the deputy. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, like, he's kind of okay in this, too. There's a couple of scenes where he's a little wooden and everything. And mm-hmm. I, I do like... Um, the bud character or whatever the big unit dude or i guess the just, big unit yeah yeah i i do like the the way that he's going and i i like this jackson kid but i mean when they introduce bud it's very clearly like them he's it's obvious right bud's the red herring yeah. you, you can tell yeah yeah everyone knows that the big unit is the is the red herring right. you're supposed to you, they wanted you to think in the movie the big unit was going to end up being Leatherface. He he doesn't talk, or at least not a lot. He's mute. He's got super strength and shit. He likes bludgeoning people. Yeah, he's the right size and shape yeah. to be a Leatherface at that age. And I also want to point out that leaves all the other candidates that we will be seeing later on. The yeah. obvious choice for, well, these guys are going to have to be Leatherface. One of these two are as well. And neither yeah. one of them is anywhere near tall enough nor broad enough of shoulder to be at the age of 17 and you, you don't grow that much more no at like 17 or 18 you're pretty much done so this is a real issue with what they're trying yeah. to do with their own continuity and logical chronological order with things and they're doing this specifically and only just because they wanted to red herring you with big unit or bud or whatever you want to call them like it's yeah and it's all obvious when you get to this point too i'm glad that you thought so as well because i thought i was just being a pretentious movie dick no no it's 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 so you just know <laughs> there's a couple of scenes where they're literally talking about jed and they cut from jed to the person like in the sequence the last clip that you got when yeah. she says his name jed there's a yeah. cut where they cut to the same fucking actor pretty much that, yeah that we both thought it was <laughs> And it turns out to be. (laughs) So they undercut it and it's super frustrating. And let's just move on. I'm I'm done complaining. Let's go. All right. Well, we started the next 20 minutes here. Um, my mom is is pretty pissed off, and uh, she's gonna go to the bathroom. She has to go to the bathroom. Well, uh, big unit strapped in a chair, and he's getting his hair cut for obvious electroshock therapy. Um, they're the shaving his doing- head in a very yeah. dehumanizing way and humiliating yeah. him, and they're doing it on purpose. Um, all the while, the other guy who he's in a fight with is strapped to a chair watching this. Uh, this uh, there's a lot of cuts in this uh, part here. Nurse is doing the bed check. Uh, Mama starts wandering around. She's she's gotten out of the bathroom. Uh, that main nurse, she goes to that ECT room. Uh, uh, the then we cut to an orderly goes to find Mama uh, in the bathroom, but she's gone. Mom gets some keys from a nurse who she smacks around. Uh, she uh, she's able to get in there. She starts screaming for Jed and waking everyone up. Um, that main nurse, she's again she's watching them shock big unit. Um, the mom is causing issues, and the patients actually start riling up, and they start getting lo- loose. Uh, and then they force the mother to leave the lawyer while the patients have now gotten loose. Uh, as two orderlies are listening, the two orderlies who are shocking big unit, they're listening to what's going on. He breaks out of the chair and smashes them both to the ground, killing them, and then releases the crazy dude who was sitting there tied to the chair watching him. Um, we see that one crazy girl who, you know, with the mouse, well, she found the same girl and pretty much she kills that girl. She finds her in her bed, kills her saying, you know, he's mine. You were looking at him. So she's talking about somebody. So, uh, that's not good. Uh, you know, for, for other people. <laughs> yeah. She's clearly very jealous or possessive and yeah. I fear for the person she is possessive of as yes. well as anyone who ever interacts with that person. Cause clearly she will mutilate them for it. Yep. And, um, 
Uh, then uh, the head doc, he's on the phone with the cops to come in there. He all of a sudden hears a knock at his door, and it's big unit. He smashes in there and smashes dude's head against the window until it breaks, killing him. Um, we see the main nurse and another nurse. They're running. They're using an emergency exit. That's uh, some tunnels, and they're running through. But they hear uh, someone behind them, so they decide to hide. Bad idea. It's a crazy dude. He finds. He cuts out the other nurse's mouth, just her tongue killing her. But then Jackson shows up and he kills that dude. Um, uh, during all this, the crazy guy who uh, uh, Big Unit released and crazy girl who killed that other girl, well, they find each other. Apparently, this is who they're looking for. They start fucking in the middle of this. Then he makes her uh, give her uh, some head. All the while, there's a riot going on around them. Um, Jackson and the nurse, they get out, but then a car pulls up and they are taken hostage by two crazy people. And we see big units in the back seat. It was the couple they, fucking in the staircase. They get kidnapped. Yeah. Yeah. They get kidnapped yeah. by them. Yeah. The couple's fucking in the staircase of the kidnappers. Yeah. Yeah. And they force them in there at gunpoint because they want the yep. nurse and Jackson just wants the way out. <laughs> yeah. Um, they, they stop the car, uh, they let Jackson out of the, uh, Jackson and the nurse out of the trunk. Jackson fights a little bit, but then big unit grabs him. Thanks God. You know, they see each other cause they're friends. Um, they all are going to go to Mexico and they're going to, you know, the nurse is kind of just a hostage, but the crazy girl wants to kill her like right away. But the crazy guy is kind of in control here. Uh, the Charles Starkweather and his jealous girlfriend here is what, yeah. what we've got going on. And these two have their own sort of thing. And he's just a rapey pig. Yes, who, he is. He is clearly drooling at the nurse just because he's in control and he wants to do horrible things to her. And yes. that is what's making the burn scarred girlfriend a bit jealous because she's also mm-hmm. insanely possessive and jealous and gross and yes. weird. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah. I, I will say this though, the effects and all this violence were really well shot and it looked great. It's just there's not really much substance beyond that. And if that's all you're looking for in a film, you're gonna have a good time with this one. Yeah, exactly. We cut to the cops are investigating uh you know the scene. The sheriff shows up, almost all the kids in there, the sheriff put in there. He says he has an idea of which kids are did all this and he left. Um the kids are now walking and uh then we cut to the mom, mama, she gets a call from someone and gets noticed that the kids are loose and that who's ready for them you know and who's looking for them and that you know she'll pay whoever's on the other phone to keep her updated uh the sheriff tells the other deputy who's kind of new he goes listen i know these look like kids but you shoot first let god sort it out he says exactly that the group minus big new unit because he looks weird uh they decide to go into a diner well, after a while, the crazies decide they're done just having a meal, and they kill almost everyone in there. Uh, I think they stab a waitress in the armpit. They stab a dude in the neck. Then uh, the crazy guy takes a shotgun and uh, blows the waitress's head off. They start robbing people as well. Well, one of the guys who was just kind of knocked out, he has a gun, and he starts shooting at them as they're all run away. They get into a car, but Big Unit gets shot in the stomach. But it goes through and through, at least. Then they speed away, and that ends that 20 minutes. So y'all see Natural Born Killers? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, this was, um, this seemed like Natural Born Killers. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of hard to stage a slaughter in a diner and not have someone think of Natural Born Killers. Yeah. You know, um, but the way that these two did it felt very much like Queen in Tarantino's <laughs> script for yeah, right. Natural Born Killers because he reuses that and he steals that with how he does the robbery in like Pulp Fiction. He reuses that same kind of momentum of a couple just going nuts in a diner and like holding everybody hostage and yeah. acting psychotic. But in this, it's just like rampant slaughter. Again, it's shot great. It, it looks no, oh, incredible. Yeah. The effects were really well done. The Even the CG stuff that they threw in with the head explosions and stuff, it was quite gruesome. Uh, it was very grotesque and bloody and, you know, that stuff was kind of fun to watch if that's all you're in the mood for you know then yeah cool um i enjoyed it on that level all the violence that was in this i got a kick out of so i didn't hate it it's just all the other stuff with the story elements and what they're trying to do to sell me on this and i'm just like you know why not just go full tilt with your sleaze you know if it's a story just go full tilt with it you know if you're not even going to pay attention to the continuity everything just right don't even bother all out right you know (laughs) i mean like they have nubbins in here they have Drayton in here and they're acting completely yeah. different. Nubbins is like got his shit together and is calm and isn't it all twitchy and weird. And yeah, right. Fucking Drayton is a psychopath who's basically telling everybody what to do and who to kill. 
Now, either the Drayton in the version of Chainsaw that we saw, the original, is a fucking liar, which is very possible that he's just, you know, manipulating and just trying. Or he lost his stomach for it. Maybe he lost his stomach for it, but he says he never had the stomach for it. But here he clearly likes to murder, you know. Or we just have a movie maker who doesn't care about what the other movie was actually about. Well, I don't think anybody, you know, and if I'm not wrong, I think I saw, wasn't this written by Kim Hinkle and Toby Hooper this time around? Didn't they say written by at some point or story by or something like I remember? Yeah, writers, Kim Hinkle based on characters, based on characters. Okay, so it's Seth M. Sherwood based on characters created by but they got credit for this one too in some way shape or form and i i know that i think they were producers again too so maybe somebody just threw a check their way but the way that they're jumping around in the story and they're changing the way characters fundamentally are it just doesn't make sense like they're definitely banking on that no one that has watched either this one or the one before it which it may be a safe bet too but they are fully banking on that no one has seen the original texas chainsaw massacre and that's yeah. a pretty big risk ask like you're right? really limiting your market to people that were born in like 12 years before your movie was made and yeah. making it rated r so that they can't go see it yeah <laughs> jesus christ you know like anybody who was born even in the fucking 90s had to have somebody like me show them the texas chainsaw massacre to where they would li- like probably like it enough to where they're gonna go see this one otherwise it's like name recognition for like fucking you know just got old enough to get into an r-rated movie by themselves maybe yeah. you know who didn't even bother to watch any other horror film but like i just don't horror fans are not like that they're not like other movie fans you could get away with doing that kind of stuff and fucking around with story in a bunch of movies that but horror fans will not let that go they will create no. entire fucking web pages based solely on how fucked up your timeline is and like have a wikipedia like that everybody edits and talks about it and like people will argue about it forever yeah they won't let it fucking go and if you're gonna be a horror filmmaker and you're gonna to get involved with a franchise like this you have to realize that you're going to have that level of kind of like crazy but three then- fan bases you don't probably want to fuck with horror star wars and star trek <laughs> because they'll let you know they'll go into it yeah they're very entitled and i'm i've been guilty of this myself and it's kind of a bad thing but what i'm getting at here is most people who get into horror don't go half-assed there's there's no real day trip around the crunch with horror unless you're like the friend of someone who's like a real horror fan and then maybe you'll have a day trip around the crunch eventually you go in full tilt eventually you do like it just it's just horror demands it at some point in time and there's no way that someone who's gonna go to yet another installment of texas chainsaw massacre that you're trying to link to the original that has seen the original is not going to constantly wonder why the fuck you're making the choices that you're making and kind of question every single thing that you're trying to do. And yet you purposely link not only your prequel film to it, but you also link a film that's supposed to come after it with it. And then you bring all the story elements from that one back to the past to tie them all together and try and make somewhat of a cohesive chainsaw verse, I guess but you do it in such a way with such abandoned disregard and kind of just thumbing your nose at like any of the original plot points in any way shape or form that it's all supposed to be in the same timeline that's all supposed to be the same characters and it just becomes another bullshit franchise that makes no sense and becomes crap i mean it's like this is the point where jason goes to manhattan you know this is yeah. this is exactly what's going to happen but when you try to do it as a series and that you plan it out all along then maybe just maybe you won't have freddy trying to possess a child of a pregnant woman yeah you won't you won't have the dream child <laughs> And I want to say all the story points, all the weird stuff that they're doing and all the changes they're they're making, if they would have done, once again, a Texas Chainsaw Massacre TV show and thrown this shit at me as a, all right, so it's not really the same family, but it's kind of in that universe where we're doing like a multiverse alternate storytelling with these same characters. But here's, it's a a TV show though. I know I will give it a shitload of leeway. I've seen me do that before. Yeah. Because, you know, you're going to play around with it and it's not going to be quite the same and you're you know just want to dip your toe into a similar storytelling vein cool go 
for it. Let's see what you do. You know, like, but that's basically the amount of respect that they're giving it is the designed by committee TV show level of, of filmmaking here. Now, this is not a fan film level of film. This is high quality, well shot, well executed, clearly planned out, well thought out, badly scripted. Mm -hmm. And they just stick to their guns with the script on this like you would not believe. And they continually try to trick you and make you think that they're so fucking clever. It really starts to make you wonder if they really thought that they were this clever. Like, did you really think that you were going to trick us with what you're trying to pull here? Or did they just look for a quick cash grab? I'm like, ah, fuck, you know, kids today don't give a shit. Let's just put something violent in front of them and who gives a flying fuck? I mean, for the most part, yeah, because... I don't mind watching this and I would probably watch it again solely for the violence and I would totally still bitch about the story but when we're reviewing stuff we're talking about the story here for the most part yeah and, I suppose and that's the part that's frustrating and I, I gotta say even with Texas Chainsaw 3D even though it was super disappointing for Matt and I if you were literally only going into this for you know gruesome bits and you know like chainsaws carving up bodies you get that a little bit but not a lot but when this one gets gruesome it does get gruesome and it does get violent and it does get insane but it never really gets Texas Chainsaw Massacre. It never yeah. it never really goes like because you set up a universe, you set up an aesthetic, you set up characters and the way that they are supposed to be. And then you completely change them with a movie that comes after it or ignore them and kill them off and try to rewrite the story without really retelling the story. And then you do a prequel to both of those like you're doing here and you completely disregard all the plot points for all the other ones. And at a certain point, that's pretty much all it is, right? It's just trying to get more money squeezed out of you. Yeah. And they're like hoping you won't notice because they threw all this gruesome gore and oh, by the way, here's Charles Starkweather. So we're going to throw a little like, you know, <laughs> natural born killers sequences back Something. in the 50s. It's just, he's very clearly Charles Starkweather. That's who it's supposed yeah. to be. So Charles Starkweather actually had other accomplices and a kidnap victim that he took on his killing spree. And one of them turned out to be Leatherface. Oh. There you go. That's the plot line <laughs> of this film. I guess we can call yes. it quits, right? We're done. Roll credits. Yeah, we're done. Uh, no more needed. <laughs> oh, no, we better fucking finish it. Oh, fine. All right, we we'll start the next 20 minutes. Uh, the group's car runs out of gas, and they come apart of a trailer home. When they go to look inside of it, they see the owner had killed himself a long time ago. They hung himself. So the girl who holds up there in the crazy fuck that night, uh, and uh, you see kind of the burn scrolls body and then uh they also they he she fucks on top of the dead body she makes out with it while uh, her man's uh plowing her she's tonguing it like it's somebody's yeah. butthole and she's all in there <laughs> yeah yeah loving it strong like um it was kind of disturbing and gross but at the same time like kind of hot no it, okay for you maybe not no <laughs> and i want to back up uh she's burned to the point where she still has breasts but it looked like her nipples were burned off and yeah the, it did it, the make it didn't look like she had a good time in her life no and uh the makeup for the scars was actually quite incredible and quite believable so i have to give them credit for that the pussy nasty corpse is discovered when the nurse trips and falls into his face falls face on it like you see all this crap comes off right you're like oh so again pretty nasty if you're just watching this to get grossed out you're gonna have a good time and yeah i still had a good time watching this i'm just severely disappointed in it still yeah of course um and the necrophilia bit was was um, quite a revelation and shocking, and I thought they filmed it quite erotically. If this were the sort of thing that you were into, you would feel seen in this scene. <laughs> yeah, you would feel you would feel like someone's finally paying attention to you. You you would feel like someone finally got the eroticism finally you were you. seeking. Yeah, like the like the, <laughs> maybe just maybe someone understood your struggle. <laughs> <laughs> someone finally understands what you're going through <laughs> <laughs> finally someone cares about what's going on <laughs> right corpse fucking yeah that so anyway he comes out and the all the rest are just kind of hanging out in the main area and the crazy dude wants to know like he's like you know this nurse saw all our files so tell me where my family is and like jackson don't you want to know where your family is and she's like i haven't seen it i only saw your medical records not your family history and fuck that they all get pissed and they go to bed and when everyone's asleep a big unit's supposed to stay and watch well that night the nurse actually gets away and as she's going through the forest she turns around and there's crazy dude well he's something like he's gonna get ready to rape her and then Jackson shows up and beats the fuck out of him and actually gets pretty good, you know, uh, advantage on there when um, uh, 
big unit shows up, and so does the crazy girl, and she's getting ready to shoot the the nurse. And Ike is like, Ike is the crazy guy. He says, "No, we we got to keep everyone. Everyone's got to stay together." And he even made up a lie. He did not say the nurse ran away. He said Jackson was running away. Yeah, and that he, he and that big unit was such a shit watchman. He missed it. <laughs> right, and you kind of see big unit like looking at him when he said that, where he's like, "Uh huh." Yeah, and I think it's because. Ike knows if he says the nurse is running away, there will be no talking his his lady down, and she'll kill him. Right, she'll she's, kill the nurse. She's looking not him. For, she's she'll look, kill the nurse. Right, she's looking for an excuse to kill the only woman here who's not horribly burned. Yes, yeah, that's um, the, that's basically what's going on because she's. Yeah, it's part of her psychosis. She's probably lashing out at all these other girls that haven't been horribly burned, and it looks like it's she's the victim of lifelong abuse. It yeah. is my guess, and that's why she's like this. And so, you know, violence and uh, humiliation is kind of something, you know, that is ingrained in her. So when the woman there that hasn't had that happen and is somewhat of a threat, you know, she wants to eliminate her in the same way that she was treated. It's kind of classic, what, psychological profiling and yeah. kind of lazy well, writing. <laughs> after all that, because who gives a shit about her? Um, <laughs> <laughs> um The guy, uh, Ike goes to take a piss, he hears something, and Big Unit shows up and smacks him around, then curb stomps him on a rock, so killing Ike at that point. So, bye Ike, that was kind of, that was kind of a little fun thing where you're like, holy shit, that, you know, fucking Big Unit just showed up and curb stomped him, holy fuck. (laughs) <laughs> I think Big Unit watch like was going to let him do what he was going to do and was just making sure that they didn't leave leave and when he lied to cover his ass as to what happened and he turned on him I think that's when Big Unit was like nah you're done either that yeah. or he's just that psychotic and he would have killed even Jackson although Jackson seems to be the one that's looking out for him so maybe it's because he was going after Jackson so he decides to kill him yeah. who, who knows it's probably more, li- more than likely a way to thin out the cast and then also give you a really brutal kill and again it is really really gross and really brutal and extremely bloody and if that's of course red herring this is red herring stuff too you got to set up that red herring right but he like he stomps his head and you totally feel like oh yeah yeah Yeah. this guy's supposed to be leatherface it's so obvious because look at how he stomped him look how he killed him look how he's been silent this entire time it's logical this this should be leatherface right you know it's a prequel but we gotta trick you and make you you know ooh, what a twist yeah ooh, what a twist (laughs) So the the only other possible Leatherface is now left alive when we've already said it's not Bud. So it's Jackson, everybody. It's fucking Jackson. Yeah, yeah, it's Jack. It's fucking Jackson. We all know it. Yeah, it was obvious. They even say when they talk about Jed, they cut to Jackson a couple times during that conversation. It's obvious. It's obvious. So anyway, the next morning they see that he's missing. So crazy girl looks goes looking for Ike. She's yelling for Ike. Jackson's like, we got to find, uh, we got to find big unit and get the hell out of here because she's just going to draw attention to us. Um, well, Jackson is the first one to find Big Unit, and he is lying on top of Ike's body. It fell asleep while bludgeoning, because Ike's body went through a few more painful, painful things uh, since the uh, curb stomp. Uh, you saw his body's all bloody and shit, so he just was beating him all night. Well, yeah, the cops he beat kept- him until he was worn out and fell asleep. That's gruesome. Yeah, yes. Uh, well, the cops capture the crazy lady, and the sheriff first comes up and pistol whips her, and then tortures her, asking her where the rest of everyone one is by putting pressure on her head and to her credit she says she was the only one her and ike were the only ones out there and she was looking for ike she never said anything but the other three um anyway she runs away she screams so they all the other three kind of hear her and they are get a good vantage point and they see she gets shot in the leg and they see the sheriff come out and jackson knows oh shit this is the one who's kind of always put us all in there um and they know it's in Sheriff, his name's Hartman, so they know it's Hartman. Well, um, the cops find the trailer, and they want to know who all's in there, and she just starts giving shit to the sheriff about his daughter being dead. So he shoots her right in the head. Kind of a cool effect when she's down the ground and smoke's coming out of her mouth. I thought that was kind of cool. Again, the special effects were great. Steven Dorsey yeah. acting his fucking heart out on this uh, when he's yeah. brutalizing her and everything. You can tell that like the pain of losing his daughter the way that he lost her just never ever healed and it's just getting worse and he tries to fill this void by torturing young kids yeah who he deems the type that would have caused his daughter's death or sawyer like in some way shape or form 
Uh-huh. And considering that he blames the Jed Sawyer that they're looking for and Jed is nowhere to be found, of course he's going to go this much more crazy. Like, it works. This stuff all works. Just yeah. not as a real Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie. Like, it's kind of cool, no. but it feels like, once again, what we talked about with Hellraiser, where it's a different movie that they just sandwiched in the character of Leatherface just to be able to call it Leatherface. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, pretty much. It's just... They use the Texas Chainsaw Massacre or the name Leatherface just probably just to get the movie made. But they did not really make a Leatherface Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie. No, I mean, it it just uses some of the names of the characters and then they just kind of go their own direction with it. You know, like a whole new thing where it's a remake will (laughs) again, remake prequel again. (laughs) Yeah. Well, all right. So um, the cops then shoot up the trailer. And the nurse runs away from the other two guys. Um, the the ch- the cops and dogs are on the chase. Um, they check out the trailer. Nobody's in it except for the dead corpse. Um, the group runs comes upon like this huge dead cow. Well, the dogs come up on it, and the cops say, "Never mind, it's just a dead cow." And they run up past it. Well, we see the three were hiding in the cow. They crawl out of it. That was gross. Gross and bloody. Yeah. And then that's the end of that twenty minutes. Again, another cool effect. That was very yeah. Gross. That was ooh, that made that gave me the heebie-jeebies. I was like, oh man, that's like way worse than a tauntaun. Yeah, it, I mean that's <laughs> terrible. Yeah, I bet it didn't smell better on the inside for sure. No, a rotten cow. At least, oh, and it's in the summer heat, you know. <laughs> At least Haas in the winter. And it was kind of an interesting shot where they did show through the, like a hole through the cow's skin where the guy was looking out to watch the cops and yeah. stuff. That was interesting what they did there. I kind of like that idea. It was really gross and neat, but like, I mean, I could totally see that, you know, someone trying to hide, you know, like that. Uh, but if you did that from the actual chainsaw family, they would just chainsaw the rotten cow and then chainsaw yeah. you and then continue to butcher you with the chainsaw and then still eat you. Yeah, of course, because... You're just meat to them. It's not the personal. It's just food. But they don't even care about the cross-contamination of carving up a rotten cow. No. Is what I'm getting at. Like, we've been led to believe that they don't care about any kind of hygiene or anything like that. Which, if they're, you know, cannibals and necrophiliacs and all that other stuff, and given how the house was in the first one, sure, I'll buy that. Yeah. (laughs) I don't know. The, The sequence, the action was great. The fighting, the violence, all that stuff is really, really cool. The story on its own, if you get rid of the shoehorn Leatherface stuff, where you just literally have a bunch of kids on the run that somehow caused the death of the sheriff, and so the sheriff wants all these kids, you know, like they caused the death of the sheriff's daughter. So yeah. he wants all the kids dead regardless, but they're all troublemakers, and they're all in a school for violent and, you know, aggressive kids. Like That's all you could do. Yeah, that story's kind of cool. Like, I dig it. You don't need to have the whole Leatherface family built in on this, and it kind of... No, yeah. It kind of taints the story. Like, again, making it more of a disappointment thing, and it gets real far afield here at this last like are you going to do the last 25 ish minutes yeah i'm after doing this? the last 30 okay or the la- last 30 last 30 ish or whatever okay so the yeah. to the close of the film like it gets even weirder and more out of field and more shoehorned in now yeah like let's just yes. get into it because jesus it just gets even okay. more weird the three crawl out and they stop at a stream to clean off because they're all fucking gross um uh, they're walking and they see a cop car pull uh, drive by. So the nurse screams for him to stop. The cop stops and big unit actually s- goes to beat the fuck out of him. And the cop shoots big unit in the head. So big units now dead and Jackson freaks out and kills the fucking cop. And then they steal the cop car. He's kind of berating the nurse and yelling at her, like, I thought you were here to help us, but I told you not to yell, I told you not to run. As they're driving, the sheriff is chasing them, shooting at them. Well, one of the sheriff's bullets goes right through the window and tears off parts of Jackson's face. Um, the nurse is freaking out. She gets shot in the arm and their car crashes. She wakes up and it's night and she uses the radio. She hears the radio crackling and asking for the sheriff. She grabs the radio and asks for help. And we see it's that one deputy who kind of thought the sheriff was going above and beyond. Well, she tells him where they are. She had an old barn and everything. And he says, fine, stay put. I'm heading out there. I'll come get you. Well, then right after that, the sheriff grabs her and takes her into the barn. We see, uh, Jackson is being, uh, is like hung right above the same hole his daughter would died at and he drops him in there and says that is actually his name's not jackson it is jed there's jed there's your big reveal <laughs> well the cops uh that deputy shows up to mom's house mom sawyer's place and he's actually her source on the take well he says hey i want my money so she drops the money he goes to pick it up they stab him a couple times and then feed him to the pigs 
after she calls him a pig. Um, then the family comes, uh, they gets the jump on the sheriff and they are able to, you know, overpower him because it's three men versus the sheriff. Um, we cut to the mom stitches Jed's face together and then uses a face contraption to hold it all together until he can heal. See, I got the inclination that, um, the window glass slashed his face, but he actually got shot in the head before the accident. Yeah. He got shot in the head. Yeah. So right before the accident. Yeah. Like, like it scrambled his brain a little bit. What they're implying is he got shot in the head. He got some bullet fragments and broken glass in the brain. And then they got into a car crash, which jostled his brain even more. Then he suffered the trauma of having his face stitched back together while he's in pain and confused and has a bunch of shit wrong with his brain and a concussion and who knows what else. Then his mother straps his skull back together so it will all heal. That's what I took it as. Like like she stitched the the skin together. Yeah, she stitched the skin together but also put his skull back together with the leather strap. Probably, yeah. That's that's how I took it. And so all of that stuff, all of that pain, and the fact that his brain's all scrambled from the gunshot is what makes Leatherface the unspeaking mind of an eight-year-old child psychopathic killer that he's supposed to be. Is that what I'm supposed to believe? Yes, that's what you're supposed to believe. Okay. Yeah. So, um, uh, the, uh, so, uh, the nurse wakes up and she's in this room and the sheriff's tied up and she's like, Hey, what were you going to do to me? And he goes, I really don't know, but he's like, you should untie me. And they get up and he's got like a rib bone sticking out of his fucking stomach. Uh, and she carries him and they open up into a room full of human bones. So the beginnings of the Sawyer house, um, as soon as they go almost to the front door, they are captured. And then Jed comes up and they give him his chainsaw. And he chainsaw the sheriff in a really cool scene, like chopping off fingers and stuff as he's screaming, and then he hits him in the chest, yeah, killing him. Yeah, that he takes. I, I his thought time. that was pretty cool. He takes his time and he tortures him, but again, this family's yeah. not quite eating humans yet. So yeah, so it's. I mean, while it would be wasteful for meat consumption, it's pretty good for if you just want to fucking get your vengeance for your face on a cop. Well, yeah, vengeance for your face, the fact that you were taken from your family and put in this institution that ruined your life. Like, oh, the, oh, yeah, I mean, I mean, the institution was bad, but they should be taken away from the mother as, you know, they did lead an innocent girl to her own death. Yes, I suppose that also is the case. But even still, in his mind, whatever's left of it after the gunshot slash glass yeah. breakup. He's protecting his family. I get it. Yeah. But they're not heroes. They're all still murderers. This is not a, this is, this is a heel program. It's a heel program. There's not, there's not a face. Maybe the nurse is a face, and that's about it, because she actually wants to help. But other than that, that's about it. Yeah. Um, one other thing that I, I just want to point out really, really quick here. I don't think that they're trying to make the families the good guys in this one. They're trying mm-hmm. to make them like the anti, like the Freddy Kruegers you vote, you fucking cheer yeah. for. They're trying to turn the Texas Chainsaw Massacre into the Firefly family so that you root for them to get away. You like want to see them do even more disgusting, horrible shit because you're supposed to be cheering for them, you know, for the titillation of watching them be awful monsters, torturing and mutilating people people that's what they're trying to yeah. do they're they're All taking right. that stance with the film with the family and i'm fine with that i don't have a problem with it mm-hmm. you clearly do because you think they're trying to make them heroes when in fact they're just trying to make them freddy krueger all right well i i guess they, they could should have gone about it in a different way but whatever <laughs> yeah they're they're trying to franchise them by making them memorable lovable characters that you just are so terrified at how horrible and awful they are that's all that's what yeah. they're trying to do and i can see where you think they're gaslighting you here but in fact they're like no they are as horrible as we've always said they were they've always been this horrible all along isn't that great and don't you just love them for it i think that's what's yeah. actually happening that's how i interpreted it eh, maybe just like i'm not whatever i'm not saying it's a choice i liked any more than them trying to gaslight me into believing they're heroes i'm just yeah. saying that's how i took it <sighs> jesus we're almost anyway. done anyway yeah we're almost done yeah well the nurse runs away and the family gives chase to everyone and uh the chase through the forest lasts for a while but unfortunately the nurse gets caught in a bear trap she begs for mercy and right when it seems like you know jed is getting ready to bring give her mercy not kill her he says you know you you know this isn't you your mom's crazy it's your mother she's crazy that's enough and he cuts her head off and uh and killing the nurse um the next day we see mom's burning clothes they're feeding pigs meat probably you know every the sheriff and the nurse in the basement we see jed makes a new face 
out of both the sheriff, the top half of the sheriff, and the bottom half of the nurse's face. I he applies, thought that was what was going on there. Yes. He applies some lipstick, then smashes the mirror. Roll credits. Yeah, so if they haven't gone full cannibal yet, but they're still sort of like this, you know... They, they got their own... Like animals to eat, so maybe it's like until these animals die off. <laughs> yeah, and maybe they are cannibals as well. It's just that they're eating the pigs instead, and you know, whatever. Uh, maybe they actually. I still feel like Drayton should have been like a barbecue, like running a barbecue even back then, or like been yeah. working for a place that was a barbecue, you know. And then maybe he set it up, or they kill somebody to gain the barbecue, and the sheriff kind of gets wise to that. But then they try and show the sheriff, you know, try and get the sheriff off. The Scent, then they kill the sheriff's daughter to you know try and break him and get him to stop going after it something anything to yeah. sort of tie all the movies together a few hints here and there uh there was a lot of promise in this one there's a lot of interesting stuff that they could have done and they definitely amped up the gruesomeness they definitely amped up the violence um the action stuff that's in this they spent some money for a lot of different like car crashes and some cool shit like that but it's all once again just like kind of a big disappointment and the only thing that keeps me from being utterly disappointed like i was in the last one was this one was that much more disgusting and gross and gruesome and they had a really erotic necrophiliac scene in it which makes me kind of like this one a little more <laughs> well there you go at least there's a little something in it for you yeah it was a little step up from the disappointment that was texas chainsaw 2013 or texas chainsaw 3d 2013 um yeah the only thing that that one really had going for it was the Dario actress and her crazy eyes yeah. <laughs> that and, and, are still haunting me when I think about them so I'm going to stop uh, talking right? about her yeah until she said the word cuz <laughs> do you think cuz do you think cuz yeah Jesus Christ oh man I felt, I felt douche chilly just doing that oh <laughs> yeah so this one is definitely um uh, very much like going for that devil's rejects um natural born killers style like spree killing um serial killers on the run you know gritty grimy type thing uh pretty heavy it's not doing anything that's all that inspired and really considering that the crew that did this are the same people who did the it's a french film that's called inside which is yeah. insane it's probably just as improbable and you really shouldn't think too hard about all of the physics and the things that happen in that film but it's a lot more contained within one townhouse for the entirety of the film and the violence is just every bit as insane and gruesome and a lot of blood and stuff like that yeah but it's fantastical is what i'm getting at and i think that a lot of the elements that are in this film that are meant to feel fantastical and meant to feel like an otherworldly tale that takes place in 1950s america also feels very much like someone who's never even seen what the 1950s or america looks like <laughs> You know, like it really, Makes sense. If I mean, it's it's foreign directors and I'm, I'm not yeah. trying to fault them for that. It's just that this does not feel anything like a 1950s America at all. And if it's supposed yeah. to be an otherworldly sort of from Jed slash Jackson's perspective, sort of like hazy tale, you know, that they're trying to do, then I guess fine. But it's so very clearly they wanted to make this specific Charles Starkweather style of movie that they then shoehorned in Leatherface to get the movie made because they wanted to make a movie and this is the movie that they wanted to make and it's completely different than any of the other Texas Chainsaw stuff but they were forced to put in enough stuff and enough winks and nods to the other movies that it's supposed to make a franchise from <laughs> and you just end up really making a, a soggy shit sandwich with a really good slice of meat in the middle that is the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre when you do this and you kind of tarnish the film if you try to put them on the same shelf right next to each other if you want them to be a trilogy yeah this was not a good plan no it was not <laughs> jesus christ that's somehow worse than the fucking platinum dunes remake to me somehow <laughs> but like i'm not pissed off at them i'm just like man you could have done so much more i'm just really disappointed at what they could have done you know and yeah again like all the stuff that they did in this if this were like a weekly tv series on like a, a showtime or one of those networks where they could go like really dark and really crazy with it they mix in more of this weird sexual stuff that they had 
with the, the characters that were on the run on the road trip and stuff. You could have squeezed a whole season of Leatherface becoming Leatherface out of out of this movie. You know, this is a, yeah. it's essentially a season of like a streaming TV show. And I think that could have been done really cool and they would have gotten more license to experiment with it. And I think a lot of people would have been like, yeah, sure, I'll go for it. It's not at least it's not another fucking movie. Yeah, right. You know, so it's just super disappointing, really. And I'm, I'm, I guess I'm done. Let's 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 yeah. end this. We have a, one piece of feedback. Uh, we got a we got a written feedback that was uh, I am. So we're going to go ahead and take the break now and do that. Are you having trouble keeping up with the ebbs and flows of modern geekery? Is the real world holding you back from knowing what is happening in the geeky world? To answer these and other personal problems brought in by your friends, gaming group, and loved ones, Geek Radio Daily presents daily informational sessions brought to you by the wonderful Billy Flynn, the Flynnstress, and podcasting's Rich Siegfried. They contain such helpful segments as history, geek birthdays, box office results, the latest in DVD and Blu-ray, video game and comic releases. Why, they also have a Sweekly show hosted by the wonderful Billy Flynn and the Flynnstress, which includes interviews and commentary. And to make sure you are informed, Geek Radio Daily also provides you with your daily dose of geek news to make sure you know more than that jerk know-it-all Steve. Visit us at geekradiodaily.com. That's right, Geek Radio Daily. All the geek without the weight. Now available in fine Corinthian leather. dug the soundtrack for this film i did um, nice. the music that was in it everything that i'm playing so far and i think they did actually feature the song that was in the trailer in the movie although i can't 100 percent say for certain but all the other songs that i'm going to be playing on the uh patreon only pirate radio edit are going to be the music that was featured in the film and then i did try to match up the tone to kind of give you the feeling as best i could with what i could find on the legion's access for those royalty free songs that i can use for the main feed. I'm, <laughs> I'm doing my best folks try and give Come you on, something man. there yeah so you got to give me a little leeway here folks but I'm, I'm trying here to to get the songs as close as possible but we don't have time for me to apologize for all of that matt we only have time for incoming mail all right so chef al i believe it's halifax nova scotia i think if i'm wrong al you can really? correct me uh, Al has uh, been a very steady listener for quite a long time and uh, would generally give us congratulatory messages, but uh, he's incapable of doing one in audio form. And that's why we've got this now. I am. So right. in the I am, it says, hey, court, but it's actually to both of us. So All right. I'm going to do a little paraphrasing here. Okay. Hi, Cinema PsyOps. <laughs> <laughs> I've been hoping to shoot you guys a clever audio message for your anniversary. Well, my timing has been so off on everything, so that ain't happening. However, I had to let you know just how much I appreciate everything you do. Not only does the show just go from strength to strength, but the online community that's grown up around it is really special. I agree. That's one of my favorite things about this is the community that we were able to build. Yeah. You've got a special vibe where things are are 
by turns funny, outrageous, smart, and really humane. Wow, that wow. Humane. <laughs> yeah. Well, if you think about it, we are well, part of the way you treat me is humane. Well, not humane to you, humane to the oh. rest of the world. Oh, okay. I got you. Then that makes sense. They're laughing at your pain. (laughs) Congrats on six years and thanks for being there, Chef Al. Now, he just signed it out, but to me, you'll always... You sounded like uh, Casey Kasem right there. Oh, I did? Thanks, Chef Al. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you, Chef Al. You know, I would really love to be able to do Casey Kasem. I know, right? That's just a great voice. (laughs) I remember back in this time, 1965, we had a song in the Dick Clark Five that was a huge hit, and I had nothing to do with that. So why am I remembering it? (laughs) Aw, don't be mean about Dick Clark, man. (laughs) I was not. I actually am quite fond of both Dick Clark and Casey Kasem. I mean, I would not have. I mean, I I would not have Shaggy without it. Yeah, but yeah. I'm I'm even more fond and enamored by that that private message that was sent to me yes. and allowed to be shared. Now, that was nice. Now, some of that is directed at me, and I, yeah. I do believe that Matt has a point. How in the world am I ever humane to Matt? And the answer is, I let him keep being on this show no matter how much he disappoints me. That's very, I mean, that's been a lot. So, okay. I mean, I get that. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I, I really like, I'm, I've been very touched by all of the messages that we've received and it's been very energizing. Uh, last week was an extremely emotional week on multiple levels, uh, for yeah, me, uh before even recording, I had actually yeah. found out the news walking down the stairs that we had lost Johnny Krug, uh, AKA yeah. Johnny Ripley. Um, and there's some other stuff, I mean, that, that happened that I'm not going to air cause that's private business and (laughs) stuff that happened in my life beyond just my cat. And I just, I had a hell of a week. And before I came downstairs last week, I'm just going to say it. Um, I was hugging my wife and I'm like, this is a lot. This is a lot, a lot. I don't know if I can handle any more. And as I was three steps down towards the studio is when I found out we lost Johnny. Jesus. Yeah. So those messages that I got last week definitely really helped me. You can actually hear my mood change. Yeah, you really could. Um, at the end of those. And it's the same thing after reading this, like the the pissy bitterness that I kind of had about this film. Even though I did kind of have a good time watching it, it's still, you know, with the gore and everything, th- this this message helped. This really yeah. brought me out of that funk. And I was feeling kind of funky as well today. So, you know, yeah. feedback does mean so much more to your podcaster than you would think it does. But- it really does. You know, it's, 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 it, I mean, we really, we, we joke about it, but we are kind of, you know, a, a podcaster is really shouting into the void. And, uh, you know, it's nice to know that people are listening. You know, it wasn't always that way. It was always that way for you and I, because by yeah. the time we had gotten started in podcasting, feedback was never a thing. Like it yeah. had already died off and people just started consuming podcasts and moving on and just like kind of, you know, we may be a part of so many people's lives that we don't even know about. Like there's so many, there's so much struggle going on out there, right? That all these yeah. people that may or may not be listening to our voices right now may not even like, you know, like we, we have no clue what it is that they're going through. Right. But yeah, they know exactly. every single thing about us that we are willing to share on mic. Yeah. And they know so much of our lives that like some of them may even be convinced that like they know us, they know who we are, not just the people we yeah. play on this show. Yeah. You know, like, and I've fallen into that as well with, with podcasters too. And I just, I want to, I want to kind of point that out. Like me as a human being, this feedback that I've gotten through this series or the Texas James so massacre movies has meant everything to me and i thank each and every one of you for reaching out and just letting us know what this show means to you because it really helps the person that makes sure that this happens 307 weeks in a row yeah i mean want to yeah. keep doing it it really does <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can see that. Um, <laughs> so I, I, I want to thank all of you, everyone that's reached out so far thusly. And I'd like to keep it going. If we can get at least one piece of feedback every week for the rest of your six, that would be amazing. When the streak breaks, it breaks. It's fine. It, it doesn't matter. Yeah. It's it's not going to be the end of the world, Um, although I may cry over it. But this has meant the world to me. So everyone that's participated, thank you. And for everyone that's about to participate next week, we got fucking Phantasm, folks. So let's just move on, right? Let's go. Yeah, right. <laughs> let's let's go let's get some phantasm into this yeah next week baby next week yeah i mean that should be really fucking fun if you enjoyed this show then make sure you check out the other great shows on the legion podcast network like cinema psyops cinema beef devour the podcasts duncan and Bo come correct exploding heads horror movie podcast friday the 13th get slayed the hell mean power hour hello this is the doom show hero hero go show Kill the Cast, Underwater Kaiju from Outer Space, Jerry Hates Action, Legion After Dark, Mental Health, 
obsessive cinema discourse, pick six movies, the podcast by the cemetery, the podcast on Haunted Hill, the psycho semantic podcast, Rick Radio, House of Wax, Dude Looks Like the 80s, Rabbit and Red Radio, The Shade Cast, Short Bus Cinema, Two Drink Minimum Commentaries, The VD Clinic, Who Will Survive Horror Podcast, and Which Versus the Doomsday Clock. With such a widespread of shows, there is guaranteed to be a niche for you to fall in love with. Horror, politics, movies, books, sex, music, commentaries, health, video games, kaiju, action, news, comedy, and opinions that would most likely get you killed in some parts of the world. We are proud to bring you some of the best podcasting in the world. Check us out at www.legionpodcast.com, iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, YouTube, and any other dark corner of the internet where podcasts can be found. the soundtrack selections they even did a yeah, good man. job of finding newer bluesier bands that uh actually mimic the sound of the time you know that they were emulating in the movie the soundtrack yeah. was at least as close as you could probably get for the weird fantasy world that this movie was in so i will give it that <laughs> uh that was another bonus that i wanted to just get out there but you know we're we're, we're done let's just let's just finish we're this up. We, we're, we're delaying phantasm yes. that much longer in everyone's we, lives i mean yeah what the hell are we doing around here <laughs> you know what? I've been asking myself that like a million fucking times. And if you would like to know what the fuck we're doing around here. Yeah, what the fuck are we doing around here, Matt Court? I think the only place to really get that answer is our landing and launching page, legionpodcast.com forward slash cinema dash psyops. I mean, for the past 306 weeks previous to this 307th episode, whatever the fuck it was that we were doing, it's there. Yeah. It's there. It's there. Podcast. It's right there. Yeah. That's, that's true. Now, I think some of the episodes are kind of getting hard to find there on the actual website. I'm not sure what's going on or if they've been archived or where they're at or what's uh, what's up with that. But uh, I don't know. Maybe I'll have to try and make those available some other way, shape, or form because yeah. I couldn't find them. I'll have to ask Bo about that. What's up with that? I have no fucking clue. If you would also would like to know what it is the fuck is going on and what it is that we're doing here, a good place to check that is uh, our Instagram, which is the meme repository. That is where all of our memes are there to be our shared. Our memes. <laughs> it belongs Share to the people. Memes. Cinema underscore psyops on the gram of Insta. We also have our Facebook group where the people's memes are easily accessed. That is cinema psyops in, well, if it's a Facebook group, can you guess where it is on Facebook? book oh. Oh. now we're getting interesting <laughs> it's in the groups of facebook because it is a facebook group of, before zuckerberg shuts us all down and tells us we're naughty children yeah for community standards that we didn't even know we were violating seven years ago yeah. because they didn't exist yes yes yeah, yes exactly yeah 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 until that happens and the hammer drops on us to ban us i am court psyops there and he is matt psyop you can also email feedback to matt let him know that it's been at least 23 goddamn weeks before he's even acknowledged that darren is alive psyop matt at gmail.com really darren I've never heard of him. <laughs> you cannot gaslight us. We have protection. We have learned what it feels like to be gaslit by these last two movies in the reviews. There's, there's no such thing as gaslighting. It's all in your head. You made it up. <laughs> Did you see that meme that Chris made? That's fucking awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't yet. I have to check that one oh, out. Oh, it's the cover photo of the group now, so it's, oh, it's there. Oh, is it? Yeah. Okay. So if you're on the Facebook groups and you find the Cinema PsyOps group in the groups of Facebook, that's where you're going to find that meme. It's now the cover right now. <laughs> <laughs> if you'd like to email feedback to court and tell him to stop repeating things over and over again just for the fun of it because he's losing his fucking mind, you can find him at <laughs> cinemasyopscourt at gmail.com. You can also tweet a couple of tweets to a couple of 
twats on the porn bot film shit fest that is Twitter. I'm at hey 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 because it's porn bot filled now. It's no longer a shit fest. <laughs> yeah, but it's a porn bot shit fest because there's good yeah. and there's bad porn bots, Matt. And that's uh, that's true. Lately, I've I never been... knew there could be a bad porn bot. But... <laughs> there are the bad porn bots out there, and they're finding me on Twitter. They're tweeting twats at me. Oh no! How dare they? I'm okay with that, actually, that part of it. But it's at, <laughs> oh, okay. I'm, I'm at court underscore psyop there, where you can tweet your twats at me, and he is at psyop Matt. <laughs> well, I guess while you're out there <laughs> tweeting your twits to a couple of twats and tweeting your twats to a couple of twits, kick the fuck out of this week and make it your bit. <laughs> Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you see me? <laughs> I guess I did do that a little bit of Gilderoy Lockhart and uh, <laughs> uh, Chamber of Secrets. Is that the one that he was in? Yes. Yeah. That's the, yeah, the Chamber of Secrets. Yeah. yeah. He's quite skilled at memory charms, actually. He is. Very much so. <laughs> Until he uses a broken wand. Fucks him up. Can you uh, oh, start recording on your side? Oh, yeah. I should probably do that, huh? <laughs> I'm recording. One, two, three. <laughs> How's your waveform looking? It's looking good. <laughs> All right, I just have... love that you knew exactly where I was coming from with that. Well, I heard it like right after I said it. I'm like, Jesus Christ. I sounded like I was saying like Gilderoy Lockhart in, in the yeah. movie version, you know, like yeah. what kind of Branagh yeah. delivers. And then when you started quoting it, I'm like, yep, he must have thought that too. <laughs> yeah, I really did. I was like, yeah, that's, that's exactly what all this sounded like. Well, we didn't get any audio feedback, but someone did reach out with a message, and oh, right. I got the permission to read that on the air as our, our you know, you know, yeah. congratulations kind of thing or whatever. So that wraps it up. We had one at least for every single Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and I'm just glad that that's over with. It's all over, man. I don't even know where to go from here anymore. <laughs> I'm I'm just lost. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to Phantasm next. That's where we're going. All right, All right let's well, just let's, let's just go. fucking go. I'm good. Let's <laughs> go. Yeah, you hear this? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. All right, then here we're going to go. We should have done that. This will keep it quiet. Oh, hi there. I didn't see you. That's gonna you be great when that cuts in. <laughs> this will <laughs> keep you quiet. I'm one of the mini. <laughs> hey, give me one second. Okay. Let's just open up a drink. I guess I just assumed you were done. Are you done with this film? Yes, I am done. Okay. I just wanted to make sure because I was like, oh, you kind of just cut it off there and didn't ask. But you had stuff to say. I, I, I thought so. I just wanted to make sure. Yeah, no, I'm good. <laughs> Three, two, one. I mean, that should be. Go ahead. That should be really if you fucking fun. This show, then make sure you check out the other great shows on the Legion Podcast Network. Like Remember, you're Cinema separate from Cinema what you're Beach, hearing in your headphones. That's, that's true. But that slayed. drum beat coming the in when you say Tower that Hour. is going to be Hello, perfect when I edit it the together the way it's supposed to be. Hero, hero, go nice. Game. It's not a funny game. You know just what I feel. Please tell me I love is real.
I'm stopping recording.